We dismiss history at our peril. Liberty Nation Radio with Mark Angelides. Welcome back to Liberty Nation Radio. I'm your host, Mark Angelides. I'm joined once again by Liberty Nation's senior political analyst and longtime host of this here radio show, Mr. Tim Donner. Uh, we've been discussing everything about the Donald Trump recent conviction, but now I want to talk a little bit broader, Tim, if we may, uh, and, and talk about the campaign styles of the two presumptive nominees, because they're not actually the, uh, the official nominees yet until the conventions. Uh, but... I think it's really fascinating how we've seen Joe Biden in 2020 have essentially a a basement strategy, as you've written about on the pages of LibertyNation.com. And now he's forced to come out of the basement. And that doesn't seem to be working for him. What's your take on the campaigns here? Well, he could only do what he's capable of doing. And I think that Biden's campaign team has realized now, if they didn't before, that he can only be brought out in a strictly controlled environment. He can still read a teleprompter perfectly well. He can still- Maybe a little say, too well with those uh, instructions. Well, I mean, he cannot, he cannot speak spontaneously and they will not let him do that. So in essence, if he could get away with it, he would run, well, you could call it a basement strategy, but more like a rose garden mm. strategy where he would act like a- a statesman and let all of his surrogates go out and and prosecute the case for his reelection. But he can't do that because he's so far behind that if he just sits there, I don't think it sends the right message to a public that is deeply skeptical of his capacity to perform the job, not just because of his age, it's because of his cognitive condition, which is evident through the eye test from everybody. So a campaign style here is, let's look at Donald Trump, because Mm. wasn't there a movie a couple of years ago, Mark, called Everywhere All the Time, or All the Time, Everywhere? That's what Donald Trump's going to be. He's going everywhere. If he goes to the Bronx and he goes to New Jersey and he goes to the Libertarian Convention, he's shown that he's going to fly in or helicopter in or parachute in to every place he can possibly get to. And I think that's going to include states that are light blue, bordering on at least medium blue, like Minnesota, Virginia, and New Hampshire. He's going to go to those places because he fully believes he can win them even though Republicans have not won in those places in some time. Uh, Joe Biden will be very, very careful, I think, in terms of where he goes, what he says, and whether uh, any questions or interaction with the public are really going to be allowed. I remember all of this is the run-up to the debate on June 27th, And it may be that that debate will tell more about the result, the ultimate outcome of this election, than even the Trump trial in New York. Well, you're right. The the debate is part of the campaign. Uh, There's no other way to look at it. Uh, It's it's a great opportunity for each candidate to put forward their vision for America. Now, there appears to be a lot of restrictions that are going to be taking place on this. Uh, particular debate. So there's a specific times, both men will be seated. Uh, and it, it seems to me that it's a very controlled environment. And that, that accrues to the benefit of Joe Biden rather yes. than Donald Trump. Yes. Um, so what do you think the strategies there will be? I mean, if, if I were Donald Trump, I would be trying to make Joe Biden lose his notoriously thin temper. Well, I think it's been clear uh, since he rejected the offer that no other politician I've ever seen in my life would have rejected, which was to appear at the Super Bowl for a softball interview. I think it became pretty clear after that that Joe Biden was not going to be able to do a lot of the things that most presidents can. not And among those things is he is not going to be seen standing up, Mm. except in unusual occasions. And that's why they pushed to have him seated during this debate, 
And I'm surprised that the Trump campaign would agree to that because, you know, president has to be able to think on his feet, doesn't he? If he can't stand up and think, I think that's a bit of a problem for the leader of the free world. But they gave into this. They gave Biden basically everything that he wants. And the thinking, I think, has to be here that, and this is what Biden has essentially hinted at all along, which is, see, he thinks he can bait Trump into saying things that he'll regret later. Mm. He thinks he can bait Trump into irresponsible language that will bring him low. Uh, yeah, create a number of sound bites that will then become the story of the debate. Yes, and Trump is famously one who will punch down as well as up and sideways. And so I think Biden's going to try to bait him. I think the Trump campaign agreed on this debate in the terms of it. My sense is because they're so confident that Trump will wipe the floor with Biden, whether that's smart confidence or dumb confidence. I don't know. But I think they're so confident that Trump will beat Biden in a debate that all they wanted to do was get on the stage with him, no matter the conditions. OK, fine, whatever. Whatever your conditions, fine. We just want to be on the stage with him to show the difference. The two, two things I want to uh, carry on there. One of them is that uh, Donald Trump is very good at impromptu speaking. Um, the day after his guilty conviction in Manhattan, he had a press conference at Trump Tower. And it was amazing if you follow what the, the media said about it. And on the front page of Yahoo News, I'm not sure if, that, if anybody's still familiar with that, but I, I'm still familiar with it. It had this uh, yeah, I am too. glorious headline saying, Trump does rambling speech from nowhere or something similar to that. I thought, wow, that's that's a really negative one. Then you click in and it's a Reuters piece with doesn't have that headline at all. It says Trump addresses charges. And they said it was rambling because he didn't use a teleprompter to Well, he always rambles. He always rambles. He I always like to say he meanders topic. rather than he rambles. Meanders. He goes off on tangents. He does a lot of, by the way, speaking of that, mm. and then he goes on to something else. And I well, think people like that there's a sense of spontaneity instead of just reading a perfectly crafted script of a teleprompter. Well, that's the thing. It's almost evidence that he can, as you say, think on his feet because he goes off on one tangent and then comes back to his overall theme. And I think he did something that uh, Amy Coney Barrett did during her confirmation hearing with the with the notebook. Uh, he had a piece of paper in front of him, and he'd look down at occasion, then carry on. And then about 10 minutes before the end of the speech, he put the, the paper away and carried on. I don't think he had anything written on it, unless it was a food order. Uh, you could you could very possibly be right. He is he never feels uh, that he has to do the kind of preparation mm. that ordinary political candidates do. In 2020, by most accounts, and in 2016, they had his staff had to beg him to do serious debate prep mm. because he thinks he can just go out on the stage and and score a knockout because he's Donald Trump. So it'll be interesting to see if he has a lot of prepared talking points here in this debate on June 27th, or if he's just going to kind of let it fly. Yeah, do, do it on the night, as they say. We'll be back with Tim Donner after this short break. Don't go anywhere. We dismiss history at our peril. Liberty Nation Radio with Mark Angelides.